we both teach uh, research methods to psychology students, right? And typically psychology students are not real interested in learning research methods because they're like, why do I need to learn this? I want to be a clinician, right? And the retort they usually give is, like if you, even if you never do research in your life and you want to be a clinician, to be an evidence-based practitioner means an ability to interact with an evidence base, right? So I think if we're saying that to students, right, if you're a clinician, you have to be out there and have an ability to read research. It's then hypocritical of us to then kind of lock our own research behind a paywall where a clinician will never be able to access it unless they have a university affiliation, which most wouldn't, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I think for me, it also extends not only to the clinicians, but also members of our community, right? right. So we work at a public university. We get funds to do research, hopefully, sometimes. And part of what I really want to do is make sure that members of the public can also see, especially if they've taken part in the research, mm -hmm. see what we're doing with that data and actually closing that research loop and publishing the findings from what we're doing. Sure. Yeah, if you're getting people to participate, they're like giving you their time for free, right? So it's a nice thing to be able to, if they if they want to know the results of the study, be able to point them in that direction. So, you know, you can actually download and read this article if you want. Yeah. I think part of the way that I've chosen is by what's available. Yep. So I have been lucky in the past to have some funding that has been dedicated to paying an article processing fee mm -hmm. to have a gold open access journal. But that is probably just a fraction of the work that I've published. Yep. So in thinking about when I don't have funding, then I immediately are th am thinking about what are my other options. So always, without a doubt, putting it in the repository, making sure that it's not, you know, in research online through the library. But also what I'm really excited about is this re read and publish agreement. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited because I think, at least in my sort of limited perspective with it, it seems to be growing. So I know in the past, the music psychology journals weren't included, but mm -hmm. now they are. So that change alone within a year of that agreement has, main, has meant for me that a lot of the research that I would publish in a journal that I would be wanting and targeting anyway, now is a part of that agreement, which means it becomes open access without having to pay for it. Right. I think it's hard to say because it's, you know, it's hard to know the alternative universe where it was all published, you know, all behind a paywall. But I, my impression is that those articles probably get more reads mm -hmm. and that probably results in more citations, which is a direct tangible benefit to me, right? <laughs> like, yeah. Um, yeah, you're publishing open access both for altruistic purposes, you, you know, you want information to be out there in the community, but there are also like direct personal benefits in that more reads generate more citations, right? Yeah. Yeah. I would agree. I would think you recently published in Computers and Human Behavior. Oh, yeah. And I did, and as one of the first journal articles I published when I was a PhD student, and I saw those citations rise at a, a different rate, a higher rate mm -hmm. than some of the journal articles I'd published at that time that were behind a paywall or yep. you know, library access. So I think for sure there is a benefit to the publications. And I would say in addition to that, I've just been asked to write a book chapter for an edited collection. Mm. And it's on the basis that they found one of my publications, an area of my research that I don't think they would have necessarily found if it wasn't in a journal that was freely accessible. Yeah, one of the easiest places to go to straight away is to go to the library. They've got libguides on these topics. You can also ask the librarians for assistance. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing to do is explore what JCU has already within Research Online.